What's going on, everybody? It's your boy J Main back checking in with the people and uh, the Game Awards coming to you live December 6th on YouTube, of course. Now, I'm sure you can watch it in other places, but I'll probably be checking it out on YouTube. All right. The nominees came out today for all the categories within the Game Awards, and I kind of just wanted to run through them and pick what I think will win for each category. Now, there's some games on here, there's some things on here that I have no idea about. And I'm probably just going to pick what I think will win in that category. For the most part, I'm going to be picking what I think will win, especially in the categories that have games that I'm either still playing through or haven't gotten the chance to play yet. And maybe later on in the year, towards the end of the year, maybe like December, we'll do like a press start game of the year type of show where we can pick off of games that we have actually beaten and played and stuff like that. So right now, let's just go through what they got for the Game Awards and see what we're working with. When I click vote now, let's click vote now and see what's up. All right, 2018, this year's nominees. Oh, they start off with game of the year? Mm, nah, we're going to start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. I'm not I'm not starting with game of the year yet. We got to work our way up there, you know? All right, so we got content creator of the year. Dr. Lupo, Myth, Ninja, Pokemon, and Willy Rex. I've only heard of one person on this list, and that's Ninja, and that's who I think will win. So I'm going to vote for Ninja. Okay, let me sign in real quick. I'll sign in using Twitter. Authorize. All right, we're voting for Ninja. Confirm that vote. All right. Let's go previous category. Back to the categories. Let's make sure that we're on the right path. What category is this? Best esports moment and then comes best esports host. All right, best esports moment. C9 comeback win in Triple OT versus FaZe. G2 beating RNG, League of Legends. Worlds. KT versus IG base race. LOL Worlds. OG's massive upset of LGD, Dota 2 Finals. Sonic Fox side switch against G oh, D, against Go One and DBZ Evo. I actually think I saw that one. I think I saw the Sonic Fox sides. Yeah, I did. That was a crazy when he switched sides and he couldn't be he couldn't beat him anymore after that. I wouldn't have switched sides. I'm going with that one. Because that was blasphemy. I wouldn't have switched sides. His ass would have to stay on the side he was on. Fuck out of here. <laughs> but I'm going with that one because that's the one I actually saw. All right. Best esports host. See, I don't like the way they got this set up here. Let's go back to the categories. Okay. Best esports host. Alex Golden Boy Mendez. He actually looks familiar. Alex Machine Richardson. On. Anders Bloom. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this name. Efe? No. Yeah. Efe? Efe? Jocks Deportere? Oh my god. I butchered her name. My, my apologies, but I don't know how to pronounce that. And Paul Red Eye Challoner. Um. I have no idea. So I'm gonna go with the face that I recognize, and that's Alex Golden Boy Mendez. I recognize his face from somewhere. Don't ask me where. We voting for him. Back to the categories. This website is trash. It runs like shit. All right. Next category is best esports event. A lot of esports categories this year, I realized. E-League Major, Boston 2018. Evo 2018. League of Legends World Championships. Overwatch League Grand Finals. The International 2018. I'm definitely going with Evo 2018, because that's the only event on this list that I actually tuned in to see. Confirm that vote. Back to the categories. I want. I hope they keep like score or something like that. That way, after the game awards, you can see how you did. All right, next category is best esports coach. Bach, Reaper, Han, Gayu, Cloud9, Christian. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Christian from OG. We got Danny Zonic Sorensen from Australis. 
Astralis, Dylan Falco from Fnatic, Jacob Yamoto Can- Cannon, M- Mebdi from Team Vitality, and Janko YNK Ponovic from MIBR. Um, I've heard of probably one of these teams I think I've heard of is Cloud9, so I'm going with them. I'm going with the coach from Cloud9. I heard of them before. You get my vote. Back to the categories. What's next? What's next? What's next? Another esports category? Jesus Christ. Best esports team. The esports team judged to be the most outstanding for performance in 2018, inclusive of multi team organizations. Astralis for CSGO, Cloud9 for League of Legends, Fnatic for League, from League of Legends, London Spitfire from the Overwatch League, and OG from Dota 2. Again, I'm going with Cloud9. That's just... Actually, they play League of Legends, though. I don't, I don't know. I feel like over... Uh, now, nah, League of Legends is definitely popping, though. League of Legends is popping. I'm going with Cloud9. I'm going with Cloud9. I think Cloud9 going to win. Alright. Is that the last esports category? Because they got a lot of esports categories this year. Nope, oh, this seems like to be another one. Best esports player represented by Omen by HP. This esports player judged to be the most outstanding performer in 2018, irrespective of gaming. Sonic Fox, Echo Fox, Takedo. Hajime, Gian Uzi Zaihao, I think that's how you pronounce that, Oleksandr Simple Kostliev, oh my, I I can't pronounce these names, Sung Hyun J. Jonik Bang, New York Excelsior, hmm, oh, I think they're going to give it to... Sonic Fox. I have no idea who these people are, guys. I know Sonic Fox from the Evo um, event. That's about it. So let's go back to the categories. Hopefully that's it for esports. As y'all can see, I don't know a damn thing about esports, dog. All right. Nope. This seems like esports game of the year or something like that. Yep. Best esports game for the game that has delivered best overall esports experience to players. Inclusive of tournaments, community support, and content updates, irrespective of genre or platform. CSGO, Dota 2, Fortnite, League of Legends, and Overwatch. Come on. Do we even got a guess? Do we even got a guess what's going to win this? Fortnite confirmed. Not even, not even a question in my mind. Fortnite taking a lot of W's this year. All right, what's next? What's this, best handheld game? Best debut indie game. Okay, recognizing a new independent studio that released its first game in 2018. Winner selected by fan voting. Oh, so actually our votes matter here. Donut County by Ben Esposito. Anna Purna Interactive. Florence by Mountains. Moss by Polyart Games. I heard that was a great game. The Messenger by Sabotage Studio. Heard that was a great game as well. Yoku's Island Express. Hmm. I think I'm going to roll with The Messenger on this. I heard a lot of great things about The Messenger. Let's pick that. Okay, back to the categories. What do we have here? Best student game awarded the best student project created at high school or the college level. Combat 2018, Inland Norway University of Applied Sciences, Norway. Dash Quasar, UC Santa Cruz. Jera, Digipen, by Bible, Bi- Spain. Lift, Isart Digital, France. And Recharged by MIT. Um, I have not heard of any of these games. But I'm just going to pick the one that I think looks cool based off the thumbnail. And I'm going to go with either Recharge or Jera. Hmm. Let's go with Recharge. I'm going to go with Recharge. Let's vote now. Recharge from MIT. 
Oh my god, this run, this website is terrible. What's good with it? Why is it running so slow? All right, next category. Oh, what's this? Best multiplayer game for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, irrespective of game genre. Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Treyarch, Activision. Destiny 2, Bungie, Activision. Fortnite, Epic Games. Monster Hunter World, Capcom. Sea of Thieves, Rare, Microsoft Studio. I was shocked to see Sea of Thieves get nominated for anything, to be honest with you. But it's cool to see um, Microsoft get some love at the Game Awards. I'm going with Fortnite. Anything that Fortnite is in, it's getting a W. Let's vote for Fortnite. I heard that Destiny Forsaken, though, was good. I heard that was really good. Like, one of the best Destiny DLCs or expansions. All right, next category. Best sports slash racing game for best traditional and non-traditional sports and racing games. FIFA 19, EA Vancouver EA Sports, EA Sports, Forza Horizon 4, Playground Games, Turn 10 Studios, Microsoft Studios, Mario Tennis Aces, Camelot Software Planning, Nintendo, NBA 2K19, Visual Concepts, 2K Sports, Pro Evolution Soccer 2019. <clears throat> I got a question for y'all. If y'all had to guess which of these games I've played before, which one do you think I played? I've only played one of these games this year. Which of these games do you think I've played? Think of it right now in your head. I'm going to give you about five seconds. Five seconds is up. The only game I've played in this list is not 2K19, but Mario Tennis Aces. And I'm telling you right now, that game is uh, is average. Average at best. But what I think will win this category is Forza Horizon 4. I actually think Forza Horizon 4 should be nominated for Game of the Year. But for some reason, I feel like they don't want to nominate racing or sports games for Game of the Year for some reason. And, Sp and Forza Horizon Horizon period is not a yearly game. It comes out every two years. So that, that excuse shouldn't apply for Forza Horizon. Anyway, next category. Best strategy game. Best strategy game, best game focus on real-time or turn-based events. Turn-based strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. The Banner Saga 3, Battletech, Frostpunk, Into the Breach, and Valkyria Chronicles 4. Um, I've only heard of Valkyria Chronicles 4 here. So I think I'm going to go with that. I, I think I've heard of Battletech. I don't know much about it, though. But I'm going to go with Valkyria Chronicles 4 here. It's the only one I really kind of seen gameplay of and know a little bit about. So I see that taking a W. All right. What do we got next? Loading. What is loading? Did this thing go all the way back? Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> This website is trash. Oh, my Lord. All right, let's scroll all the way back down to... What category are we on? Oh, no, not here yet. No, nope, definitely not here yet. Oh, we got a lot more to go. A lot more to go, a lot more to go. Okay, we're right here. What is this? Best family game. For the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform. Mario Tennis Aces, Camelot Software, Planet Nintendo. Nintendo Labo, yikes. Nintendo EPD, Nintendo. Overcooked 2, Ghost Town Games, Team 17. Starlink Battle for Atlas, Ubisoft Toronto, Ubisoft. And Super Mario Party, ND Cube, Nintendo. Ooh. What do I think will win best family game? Mmm. Well, Overcooked. I heard a lot of good things about Overcooked. But when I think of a family game, Mario Party does come to mind because of how many players can be, you know, active on this game at once. Ooh, it's either Overcooked 2 or Mario Party that I'm going with. I've not played none of these. Well, I played Mario Tennis Aces, but again, I'm not going with that. I'm not going with that. 
Labo. Nah, that's some cardboard. I ain't, uh, ain't nobody trying to play with no damn cardboard. Oh, I'm rolling with the... Oh, this is tough. This is tough. This is tough. I'm going to go with Overcooked too, y'all. I just think Overcooked going to get this. I think Overcooked going to get this. I feel like people really like the first one. And they want to give it its its proper love by uh, giving it this award for the second one. I heard good things about it too. So on its own, I heard it's a great game. So next category, next category. Best fighting game. For the best game design primarily around head-to-head combat. Ooh. I don't play fighting games like that, actually. So this is purely on what I think will win. Blast Blue or Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Arc System Works. Dragon Ball Fighters. Arc System Works. Bandai Namco Entertainment. Soul Calibur... <clears throat> excuse me. Soul Calibur 6. Bandai Namco Studiso. What? Bandai Namco Entertainment. And Street Fighter V Arcade Dips Capcom. Um, ooh, what do I think will win this? I think Dragon Ball Fighters is gonna take uh Best Fighter this year. Not only because Kofi plays it a lot, but he's big in the fighting games, and to him, this is the the best fighter that's out this year. So I'll take it from his uh, experience that he knows what he's talking about when it comes to these fighting games. Because I damn sure don't. It's crazy because Smash won't be on this list because it comes out after the deadline. But I'm, you, you can bet it's going to be on next year's list. All right, back to the categories. All right, what do we got here? Best RPG for best game design with rich player character character customizations and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. Dragon Quest Eleven: Echoes of an Elusive Age. Monster Hunter World, Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, Octopath Traveler, Pillars of Eternity 2, Dead Fire. Ooh, this is good. This is good. Now, Monster Hunter World is up for Game of the Year, but I don't think it'll win Game of the Year. Now, because of that, I do think they're going to want to give Monster Hunter World some type of credit. So I'm going with Monster Hunter World here. I'm going with Monster Hunter World here. If it wasn't Monster Hunter World... I would probably go with Dragon Quest Eleven, but Monster Hunter World, I think it's going to win Best RPG. Back to the categories. Y'all hear my chair? I need a new one. Oh, okay. What we got here? Best what? Action adventure game? Yeah. Best action adventure game for the best action adventure game combining combat with the traversal and puzzle solving. We got Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War. Marvel Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Well, we can cross that game off. That's definitely not winning. I think best action adventure game is going to come down between... And this sucks because God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2 are like the two best games this year, in my opinion. And the fact that they're both in this category... I mean, I'm probably going to be picking from one of these two. But as far as action adventure goes, I got to go with God of War here. I feel like action and adventure combined together so far, I think God of War, I think God of War takes that. I really do. Actually, I think God of War and Spider-Man actually might take it over Red Dead in that category just because of what it is, action adventure. Yeah, I'm going with God of War in there. Yeah, definitely going with God of War there. Okay. Back to the categories. Back to the categories. Wow, that was good. What's next? Best action game for the best game in the action genre focused on combat. Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Dead Cells. Destiny 2 Forsaken. Far Cry 5. And Mega Man 11. Far Cry 5 uh, came out earlier in the year. It didn't... It got some. It got a lot of love early on in the year, but I, people kind of stopped talking about it as the year went on. I could see Far Cry 5 taking this one, but again, I heard Destiny 2 Forsaken was really good. Dead Cells, I heard some good things about. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is good too. I enjoy that game. 
But um, I'm going to go with Far Cry 5 on this one only because I don't see it in any other category. And I think they're going to want to show it love here. I'm going to go with Far Cry 5. All right. Back to the categories. What's next, y'all? Best VR AR game for the best experience playable in virtual or augmented reality, irrespective of platform. Astrobot Rescue Mission. Beat Saber, Firewall, Zero Hour, Moss, and Tetris Effect. <clears throat> hmm. For me, it comes down to Tetris Effect and Astrobot Rescue Mission. I've heard great things about Astrobot Rescue Mission. Like, I'm talking Mario 64 levels of what it's doing for VR as what Mario 64 did for uh, Nintendo 64. And for, you know, the adventure game genre. I'm going to go with Astro Bot on this. I heard Tetris Effect was really good too. But the way they were talking about Astro Bot, I think that's going gonna, gonna to take the cake. Back to the categories. I feel like we're about halfway through here. Maybe a little bit over that. See what we got next. Uh oh, I seen Fortnite. <laughs> best mobile game for the best game playable on a dedicated mobile device: Donut County, Florence, Fortnite, PUBG Mobile, Reigns, Game of Thrones. Uh, y'all already know what time it is. Any category that Fortnite's in is getting the W. That's it. Fortnite is huge. Me personally, I don't like Fortnite. I can't get with that building stuff. It's too much for me. I do like watching people play it, but I can't I can't get jiggy with that. All right, next category. What do we got here? Best indie game. Our outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Celeste, Matt makes games. Dead Cells, Motion Twin. Into the Breach, Subset Games. Return of the Obra Dinn, 3909 LLC. And The Messenger. I've heard of a lot of these games. Um, I know Celeste is actually nominated for Game of the Year. I don't think it's going to win Game of the Year, but I did hear Celeste was great. So I think Celeste is going to take Best Indie Game. You know, politics, y'all. Y'all got to understand, politics is going to play a factor in this. And again, these are just what I think will win for the most part. Not my personal picks. A lot of these games I have not even played. All right. Up next, we got Games for Impact for a thought-provoking game with a profound pro-social meaning or message. 11-11 Memories Retold, Celeste, Florence, Life is Strange 2 Episode 1, The Missing the Missing J.J. Macfield, and The Island of Memories. Um, I feel, I haven't heard a lot of a lot of these. I've heard of Celeste, of course. I heard of Life is Strange 2, of course. But I feel like some of these other games might, you know, really shine in this category. And I'm going to go with 11-11 Memories Retold. Just because that sounds like sounds like something that has some deep meaning behind it. Based on the name of the, uh, the game. <laughs> That's basically what I'm going off. I've heard of that game too. Just never really looked into it. All right, what's next? Ooh, voice acting, huh? Got some voice acting here, y'all. Best performance awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture. Brian Deckard as Connor, Detroit Become Human. Christopher Judge as Kratos, God of War. Melissa, Melissa Thai, Mahut as Cassandra, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Roger Clark as Arthur Morgan, Red Dead Redemption 2. And Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker, Marvel Spider-Man. Wow, what a category. What a category. A lot of great performances here. A lot. Troy Become Human. His, his voice was cool for Connor. His voice was cool. Christopher Judge as Kratos, God of War. Um, 
he his voice is iconic. I mean, everybody walks around talking about boy. Oh, that's gonna be hard. It's tough. I haven't played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so I'm not familiar with Cassandra's voice actress. Roger Clark as Arthur Morgan. Mm. A lot of dialogue, a lot of lines. Great voice actor. And Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker for Spider Man. He bodied that role as Spider Man. I mean, killed it. Peter Parker, the Spider Man voice, he killed that. I'm going to go with him. I'm going to go with Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker. I think he nailed that. He nailed that role. And what's cool, too, if you didn't know, like when you're playing Spider Man, whether you're swinging or, or not, his voice changes. So, like, if you're in the middle of a conversation and um, he's talking, like if you're walking on the street and then you start swinging, his voice will become as if he's like exerting a lot of energy. And that reflects in the way his voice sounds as the character. So, I thought that was really cool that, you know, his voice had range depending on what you were doing. All right, next category. Best audio design presented by Adobe, recognizing the best in-game audio sound design. Call of Duty Black Ops 4, Forza Horizon 4, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. I think I'm going to go with Red Dead Redemption 2 on this one. I think because the world has so much going on, and there's a lot of unique sounds from the characters to the animals to the way items and objects sound and the, the wildlife and... Just in the way that how there's um there's is a dynamic time of day, day cycle, and the sound reflects really on the time of day a lot. So I think they did a, a great job nailing the audio. I think the guns sound amazing. Um the fighting, you know, the combat sounds great. Stuff like that, I think as a complete package, I think Red Dead's taking that. So we're gonna vote for Red Dead. All right, back to the categories. Well, then we got like uh, four or five left. Almost done. Oh, I think I went back too far. This website is running so slow. Oh my God. Okay, we good. All right, next category. Best score music presented by Spotify for outstanding music inclusive of score, original sound, and or licensed soundtrack. Celeste, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Nino Kuni 2, Octopath Traveler, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a fire soundtrack. Octopath Traveler music is amazing. I don't even have to go no further. Octopath Traveler is winning that. Nino Kuni 2, Revenant Kingdom, Marvel Spider-Man, God of War and Celeste. I'm going with Octopath Traveler. I think that'll win. That music is amazing. I remember listening to that soundtrack before I even got the game. Going with Octopath. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Hey. Don't forget to put that in the comment section what you guys think will win for these categories. Really interested to see what you guys think. Or just pick one category of your favorite and let me know what you think it'll be. Especially your game of the year category. I know everybody's going to want to you know, talk about that. That's going to be a big one. The biggest one. All right. What's next? We got best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War, Octopath Traveler, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Return of o the Obra Dinn. Hmm. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is the best looking game this generation. So as far as technical achievement, I think that takes the cake. Um, creative. Uh, Octopath Traveler has a nice art style. Yeah, I think Red Dead is going to win this one. I just think it's the best looking game this generation. I think the, the attention to detail, um, the visuals, all that other good stuff. The ability to get the 4K on the Xbox One X, stuff like that, like, and for the game to look that amazing, yeah, I gotta go Red Dead. Y'all see this? This website is in shambles right now. This is crazy. Okay. 
confirm my vote. All right, back to the categories. Man. I don't know if it's a lot of people on the website right now or if it's just... But these nominees came out earlier today. Like, people shouldn't be on it now. It came out almost 12 hours ago. Can't believe how slow this thing is going. All right, what's next? What we got left? Oh, we're almost done. All right. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in the game. Detroit Become Human. God of War. Life is Strange 2 Episode 1. Marvel Spider-Man and Red Dead Redemption 2. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I got God of War winning this. God of War is going to take that. Okay, now the website wants to run well. Let's go. Let's get this done. Okay, best game direction. Awarded to a game studio for outstanding creative vision and innovation and game direction and design. A Way Out, Detroit Become Human, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm going with A Way Out on this. I think the way A Way Out was with the co-op aspects where you had to work together and you know certain characters have to do certain things and... It became a great game to play with a friend or a stranger because you can play it online. And just the way the whole story unfolded, I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you have gotten the chance to play A Way Out, definitely worth the play. In fact, a good thing about A Way Out as well is that only one person has to buy the game and you can invite a friend to play the game for free. So when it comes to innovation and game direction and design, that should be included in there as well because that's something that not practically no game does where you can buy one copy and play with a friend and just invite them in and play the whole game through. So I'm giving it to a way out there. Shout out to that man uh, from last year's Game Awards that was screaming, fuck the Oscars. <laughs> and you, know, you know what's funny? They might not give him an award because they don't want him to come back up on stage and talk that talk. That man was speaking facts. Best ongoing game. Awarded to the game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Destiny 2, Fortnite, No Man's Sky, Overwatch, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Ooh, Siege? Siege? Siege doing his thing. Overwatch? Doing his thing. No Man's Sky. I heard the, the, rec the recent updates and content that they added actually made it the game that they promised. I wonder if they're going to give them that award for recognition for that. Or maybe the nominee is enough recognition. <laughs> Fortnite? And Destiny 2. Now I know where I'm going with this. Fortnite taking it. Is that easy? All right. And is this... Is this... The daddy of all daddies? The game of the year? Recognizing the game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Celeste, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Monster Hunter World, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Mm. Mm -mm. Woo. This is tough. This is tough. Because the industry fell in love with the new direction for God of War when that game came out. And it was something that they didn't, they didn't know if they were going to like. They wasn't sure if they wanted more God of War. And not only did they like it, it exceeded expectations. Blew them out the water. And they can't wait for another one. <sighs> Spider-Man came out. Did its thing. One of the better. One of the best Spider-Man, if not the best Spider-Man games. One of the better superhero games. Can't even call it the best, but one of the better ones. Great game. I don't think it was game of the year worthy. Monster Hunter World. Great game. Don't know if it's game of the year worthy. Red Dead Redemption 2. Definitely game of the year worthy. 
I ain't even finished that game yet, and it's up there as my top two, one of my top two games of the year, between that and God of War. Celeste, like I said earlier, I heard great things about. Don't think it's game of the year worthy, but <clears throat> like I said, anything goes. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, heard it was good. But when it's going up against God of War and Red Dead Redemption, I don't think it's going to hold. So really, it comes down to God of War and Red Dead Redemption 2 for me. And I think Red Dead Redemption 2 going to take it, man. I'm going Red Dead Redemption 2 as my game of the year. And that's it, folks. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. Will win game of the year. I'm going with Red Dead Redemption 2. Me personally, God of War. It's still in the running. I Like I said, I have to beat Red Dead Redemption 2 in order to get my final verdict. But I'm going with Red Dead Redemption 2 for game of the year at the Game Awards. Don't forget to rate the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And I'll catch you on my next video. Peace.